I've never been to a convention before. AFO was the first one that I've been to three years ago. I've been to a couple other conventions since then. Um, I like to come here because I think it's a little bit more uh, like on hands. And I've been to a couple conventions where they pay you money, and I just kind of I feel I feel weird about it. There's just so many restrictions on like what I can't do with my fans, uh, and, and there's no restrictions here. With Karen, and Eric, I mean, they just kind of let me do what I want. I mean, it doesn't be you know at this time you got you need to leave. You can't talk to this person, that person. Some conventions are a little restricted, so I'm really not into doing any of them. This one I like coming to. Um, uh, the reason why. I never gone to conventions. I know a lot of people. It had nothing to do with the money or anything like that. I just, um, I don't know. I, got, I guess I just got busy, and I, I guess I missed out on on a lot of uh, what these things are all about. You know, I kind of missed out. You know, when you never, when you, when you never done anything, you don't know what it's like, and then you do it. You're like, oh, it's kind of cool, man. You meet a lot of good people, a lot of fans. So I didn't really know what I was missing. So I wasn't really, in my head, I wasn't missing anything. Plus, no one actually called me to do any, any anime conventions at all. I remember I was watching TV, and my little girl, we were watching, and Disney Disney World came on, a commercial, and she's like, Daddy, I want to go there. And then all of a sudden, I got an email from Karen about this convention that's in Orlando, and I was like, wow, that's perfect, man. I'll go to do a convention. And you know, I showed up, and Karen flew me down here, and she went to Disney World, and I came here, but it was pretty cool. So it was kind of a coincidence thing that that email came, and oh, literally 30 seconds after the, the commercial came, I got Karen's email. <laughs> I was like, Orlando, and I was like, Orlando. I was like, and I said, I want to go. And I was like, all right, we'll go to Orlando. So I got a chance to meet. So this was my first uh, convention. Was well, my third time here? Yeah, first convention three years ago. That was it. So and I've done a couple since then, but you know, nothing like the AFO. And I know you guys go do, you guys go to different conventions and all that stuff, but I'm kind of, you know, I only know AFO. <laughs> I'm hijacking the questions. First, I just want to thank my master for coming. <laughs> thank you for being here, my liege. I swear I was looking for Kerrigan. I thought he dropped in from San Mateo. <laughs> That's a very good invitation for Kerrigan in Arizona. Thank you. I just have one question. Yes, sir. Why, when Sordon was killed, were you turned human and I was turned to dust? <laughs> Cybertron was only a one-man show, so I was pretty cool. I was like, yeah, cool. So uh, anyway, I was going next door, and they were building a pretty big studio next door. And then Brad Hawkins, who was doing VR Troopers, was going to do the White Ranger role. And so they were about to switch, but then, you know, everyone wanted me back as the Green Ranger. And then I'm kind of glad, because then the white and the big movie hit, you know. I would have been stuck over there in VR Troopers. And I don't have film. So that's kind of how, that's, that's, I was working, but still working for Saban. You know, I did that, and I did some Sweet Valley High episodes and stuff like that. Did you, uh, did you ever have a crush on Kimberly, Pink Ranger? <laughs> I, get, I get asked that all the time. I, you know, I mean, I worked with her for, you know, 18 hours a day, and, you know, I mean, I, don't, I liked her. She was cool. Yeah. But a crush, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you work for someone long enough and you start liking them. Like my work with Robert, I was like him. <laughs> Who's next? Okay. Um, besides Power Rangers, is there anything else in the future for either of you two? Yeah, well, I'm, I get work all the time. I. I did a couple of episodes of Ted and Eric's awesome, awesome show, awesome comedy. I always get to and uh, and I work for a company called.
Oh, Winkler Productions doing ADR for them. I did five projects for them over the last year. And I think they got another one coming up sometime in August. And uh, so uh, I did a couple of uh, industrial type jobs, a video game. So I'm stay busy. And it's been pretty busy convention-wise this summer, so it's hard to sink your teeth into something you home when I'm constantly getting on the plane. But I love that part of it. I love the roots conductions and meeting you guys. You know, I've just been with my clothing line in, in the mixed martial arts. I've been focusing on that. I represent a lot of UFC fighters, and I kind of turned my whole, um, probably in the last year and a half, I turned it all towards MMA training. I had fights scheduled October, November. I was kind of trying to hit it up a little bit, um, get some on some bigger cars. Who had the question? So I know I'm looking at the right person. You? Okay, there you go. Right. Look at that. And then, uh, uh, and then I was going to work on, you know, getting some bigger cars and stuff like that. Also, when, when you're in that industry, you get movies, man. I mean, like Pete Spratt. You guys even know who Pete Spratt is? No. He's, he's got a film coming out. He's an MMA fighter. Pete Spratt, I represent him in my clothing line. He's got a film coming out because he's a mixed martial artist. Um, you know, George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, all those guys had a big a big movie, tons of MMA guys in the film. The film was horrible, one of the worst films ever. I mean, the acting was horrible. I mean, you can go see it, I forgot the name of it, but it was just a horrible film. And I think a lot of times directors and producers, uh, I need that. Uh, a lot of times directors and producers you know, they think one thing, like if I can get this guy from UFC, uh, then the movie would be, will be big, but you know, um, so that's why I wanted to hit that industry, because producers will call me, oh, you do karate, oh, we'll sign you for this movie. You know, uh, Rich Franklin did a film that I was gonna read for, you guys know who Rich Franklin is? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, it's like the producers just like, I don't get it. Like, anyway, they casted him in it, because he's a UFC star, and the, the, the movie's sitting on the shelves at Blockbuster. So, you know, they're spending a couple million dollars, even on low-budget movies, but the acting's just horrible. I